Ladies and gentlemen, it's your friend Mike Brady from Ocean Liner Designs, and today I'm extremely excited to show you something that's 
really quite special. Uh, this is a project that myself and the team have been working on for some time, and we've had a really hard time of keeping it under wraps. We wanted to tell you about it, but obviously I didn't want to kind of pull the trigger and let you know that we were working on something like this until we had something concrete to show you. So what you just saw was the trailer for uh, a new virtual experience called Ocean Liner Designs Grand Voyage. What is Ocean Liner Designs Grand Voyage? Well, it is essentially Ocean Liner Designs the video game. It's a interactive virtual experience designed so that you can explore uh, some of the history of the machines and, and ships and airships and all kinds of things that we featured on this channel. And I'm super excited to announce this project because my team and I have been working on it for quite a few months now. So we're just going to dive straight into it. Um, now at the moment we are in the main menu with a fairly burly looking ship's captain staring at us. Uh, what we're going to do is load straight in and we're going to show you how the game works. So essentially um, you spawn into the menu and you have the uh, my fleet option. So my fleet is where all of the ships and airships that we cover in game will be kept. And at the moment for launch we've got uh, two ships from the channel that we feature quite heavily. Two of my uh, my favorites actually that I'm quite interested in. The Empress of Ireland and the TSMS Laconia. The Empress of Ireland famously sank in a collision with uh, a collier. Laconia was a cruise ship, formerly the Johan van Alden Barnevelt, the Dutch ocean liner, and um, she was also lost. And you'll notice there's a third option there uh, for the airship, the R101. Now R101 is in early development. We'll be looking at um, adding that properly to game later down the track. Can't wait to show you that one because that one looks incredible. It's a completely different experience cruising above the um, the earth. It's quite cool. So oh, I'm quite excited to tell you about this. There's a lot to get through. I don't have a lot of time. This is only going to be about a 15 or 20 minute long um, stream. So we'll dive straight into it. Now on um, entering into each ship, you'll see that there are three levels. You've got the dockside, you've got the mid-ocean level, and then you've also got the shipyard. So each of these three levels will teach you different things about that ship at different stages of its life. So let's just load straight in. We're going to look at the Empress of Ireland in the dry dog level. So here we are in the shipyard level. And before we get too stuck in and have a bit of a look around, I want to run through the team and what they've all been doing and kind of bringing to the table on this project. So we'll start out with Matt Hughes. Matt is our lead developer. He has been working with Unreal Engine 5 to bring in these gorgeous ship models and bring them to life. He's built the environments and essentially these set pieces that we see the ships in. And he's really the uh, the architect of the way that this, this engine works. There are some really interesting and exciting features that he's brought and installed into, the, uh, into this game that we'll run through in a minute. Then we've got our 3D modelers who have actually been building the, the ships and the vehicles. We've got uh, Liam Sharp. Liam I've worked quite closely with for some time now on um, 3D models for uh, documentaries on the channel. Lucas Gustafsson, uh, who works on the exteriors of, of ships in particular. Um, this is his gorgeous Empress of Ireland that we're kind of staring at here in the dry dock and we'll have an explorer in a minute of. But gorgeous detailed um, modeling from those two uh, artists, essentially craftsmen. And we do have some guest uh, modelers that we'll introduce you to a little further down the track, but we uh, can't wait to show you a little bit more of what they're working on. We've also got Jack Gibson. Jack is the uh, animator. He's the media coordinator for this project. So that gorgeous trailer that you just saw, um, he actually uh, animated for us. Well, that was fantastic. And we've also got researchers. So Sarah Brenneman, she's the writer for the Ocean Liner Designs YouTube channel. She's also writing some of the copy and doing some of the historical research for some of the goodies in this game. And we've also got assistance from researchers like Joe Lavender. He's a uh, naval historian and author, um, great supporter of the work that we've been doing. And we've also been working a little bit um, alongside our friends from Titanic Honor and Glory. Those guys have given us a lot of input and some guidance on how to kind of put this thing together. So I just wanted to give a big thank you to the THG team. They're big friends of the channel and we, we love their work. So that team has come together and uh, made this crazy, crazy thing uh, called Ocean Liner Designs Grand Voyage. And so what we're going to do is have a little look around this level here, which is the shipyard level. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, three different aspects of this experience that make it completely unique that we're sure you're going to enjoy. So the first aspect I want to talk to you about is the freedom to explore. So what Ocean Liner Designs Grand Voyage brings is just the ability to see these ships in remarkable 
um, conditions in remarkable environments. Of course, this is a dry dock, a massive cavernous dry dock where the ship would be overhauled, refitted extensively. And you can see that the Empress of Ireland is absolutely filling this dry dock up. And you can essentially travel anywhere around this level and explore the ship. You can even go on board. You can see you can go up that gangway. So what we'll do, we'll just go down to the bottom of the dry dock here for a minute. If you look down, you'll see you're actually a, uh, a ship's officer. <laughs> That's a nice little touch. Um, you can see there's the Empress of Britain sitting over there at the, uh, the fitting out wharf. We'll just go down here a minute and stare up at the um, gorgeous stern section of the Empress of Ireland. What this experience does is teaches you things. You can see these ships as they were and see things that people haven't seen for a very, very long time. And here you can actually see that one of the propellers has been taken off because that's being fixed up. I learned a lot about the Empress of Ireland from doing this. First and foremost of all, look at the size of this ship. This is unbelievable. This is a 14,190 ton um, ocean liner, which is, you know, no giant. But look at the sheer scale of this thing just towering over you. Uh, we've had a lot of fun walking around and exploring these ships and seeing them from unique angles that haven't been seen for centuries. We've also had a lot of fun with posing them and kind of bringing them to life in, in different ways in the different levels. So you can see here that some boats are swung out um, that will show you how the radial davits work. And we'll go and have a look at those in a minute. But what we'll do is we'll just walk under the rudder here. Can you tell I'm excited to show you this? <laughs> We've been sitting on this for months and it's been probably the hardest, the hardest secret to keep possibly in human history. <laughs> so I mentioned that you get the freedom to explore. Actually, you can see one of the Empress's boats over here is, uh, has been taken off for painting. Now you just saw me use the scroll wheel. This is one of the features that Matt has built into the um, experience. So you can zoom in on things, you can zoom out. Walking up um, to the Empress, well actually, maybe we'll just go up here a little bit. I'm not going to be showing you too much of the ship because I'm excited for you guys to do your own exploring. But you'll notice there's a couple of interesting things going on here. Um, the first is it's these gorgeous um, views and just being able to, to look down the length of the hull is quite a unique experience. And we'll just go up on deck. We've taken a lot of care to make sure that these ships feel alive. And so at the moment on this level, um, we are at a shipyard, the ship's engines are off. She's kind of still, but if you walk past fans, you'll hear them buzzing and humming. And you can see um, all of this equipment and deck equipment kind of gathered on the deck here. Let's uh, walk up forward. We'll walk along the promenade deck here and we'll go and have a little bit of an explore. You'll also notice there are people sitting around. Um, this is one thing we're really excited to bring to the table with this experience. Uh, we will be having the ships occupied with people, uh, passengers and crew who will be um, going about their day-to-day -day activities and enjoying their time on board the ship as we hope you are as well. It's quite a unique thing here, just being able to like stare out uh, at the distance and look over the, the side of the ship. I never get tired of that. We're really excited for you guys to, uh, to explore these ships. There's going to be a lot to explore. As you can see uh, from here, we have some uh, interiors going on. But we'll talk about that another time. <laughs> There's just too much to get into. So here we are at the um, bow of the Empress of Ireland. We've just walked up the promenade deck and we'll just hop down here. But I just wanted to give you a sense of um, the, the scale of this thing and just how exciting and interesting it is just being able to walk around it and have a look. And if we actually hop down the gangway here, this is one of my favorite things, is just coming down here and getting back down into the bottom of the, the dry dock and staring up at this thing from way down here. This is very cool. Just seeing this uh, ship towering over you, like a, a sight that hasn't been seen for, you know, over a hundred years now. So what kind of vehicles will be included in Grand Voyage? Well, our mission statement with this game is essentially to bring back to life ships that have been long forgotten. So at the moment, you'll notice that we've got two ships um, that we plan to include for launch. 
that are um, they were they were sunk, they were lost, and they were fated to be destroyed. But that's kind of not what Grand Voyage is all about. It's not about just remembering the disaster and the you know the the, the sadness involved. It's actually about capturing the ships as they were in their glory days. So really trying to bring them back to life and really show the splendor and the beauty of, of um, what these shipbuilders and craftsmen managed to accomplish. And so this is really like our ode to the great ocean liners of yesterday. We're really kind of penning a, a love letter to these old, um, these old ships. Therefore, we won't just be having ships that sank. Uh, we will be including ships that went on to have very successful careers some that you've heard of and some that you haven't um i'm excited to say that one of the early ships we know we're going to include is the hungarian which is a ship that not a lot of people have heard of she's the absolute um favorite and the the really the pet of our uh, of our 3d modeler and researcher liam sharp and he's going to be doing a great job of bringing her to life I've mentioned the R101 airship. Um, that was a, a vehicle that I'm really, really interested in. And just the ability to stand and look down at the world going past you is such a unique thing. So we're all really excited to be to be bringing you these things. We also um, will be working on ships like the Aquitania, um, the Queen Mary, all these vessels that are now long forgotten. Just being able to walk around them not only on board them, but in the dry dock or by the dockside and seeing them as they were and in their natural kind of habitat. So that's the exploration aspect. You are free and, and completely um, capable of exploring these ships and these vehicles at your discretion. So what we'll do is we'll go back to the main menu now and just fire up uh, another level. And I'll tell you about another aspect of this game that we're really excited about. Let's go over to Laconia now, and we're going to go to the dockside level where she's um, tied up and moored before a departure. So we'll just load in. The second aspect of this experience that I want to talk to you guys about is interactivity and the ability to learn. So one thing we're really keen to do with this is use it as an opportunity to teach um, the history of these vessels and ships and machines in a really unique way. And one way we're going to do that is by giving you the opportunity to interact with the environment, to um, pick up bits of information, to learn, to interact with media, to watch videos while you're also exploring um, the ships. And we've actually got an early uh, example of a little bit of um, interactivity because if you walk a little bit past here, and by the way, can we just appreciate how gorgeous, <laughs> how gorgeous this whole thing looks. Um, what we'll do is we'll just walk over here to this awaiting speedboat. <laughs> we again want to give the player the kind of absolute freedom to explore as they want. And one way of doing that is to let you kind of get around on your own and kind of see these ships from different angles and interact with the environment in ways that you may not have in the past. So let's jump on board and have a little look. All right, so here we are in the speedboat here and we're just going to go for a little uh a little explore one of the things that we're really excited to do with this experience is give you the opportunity to like i said kind of explore at your own pace and learn different things about these ships and so the idea is that each level will give you a completely different experience and First and foremost, can we just appreciate this gorgeous recreation of uh, Liverpool, which Matt had put a lot of time into um, into putting together for us. And we've got some, some marine traffic out there. Um, what we want to be doing here is recreating these ships in, in different environments. Of course, they existed, you know, in different spaces. They weren't just at sea all the time. They were being unloaded. They were being repaired. They were, you know... They were living, breathing things, essentially. They just uh, existed in, in many different uh, environments. And so we want to recreate that, and each environment will have a very different feel. So the exciting thing about this dockside level is, of course, being able to drive a boat around uh, and have a lot of fun and just get up close and personal with the ship. And so the one thing to note is that a lot of this stuff is uh, really early. You know what I mean? We haven't um, completed the game. We're nowhere near close to, to finished. This is the Alpha, which is the first build. I've just accidentally collided with the Laconia. 
I think I'm going to be in trouble with the Harbour Master. Um, this is the the really early build, but we, look, we're excited to say we're already at alpha. The next stage is um, beta testing and getting the game to a state where we can you know, kind of give it to early testers to, to have a little experiment with. Um, essentially, with the interactivity aspect of this, the three different levels tell different parts of the ship's stories. So, um, essentially, the, the kind of way to teach history and make it interactive um, is to within Grand Voyage give the opportunity to, to look around these ships and, and find things and interact with them and, and kind of learn about the history of the ship in different stages of its life. So the shipyard will talk about the ship's construction, the company that owned it, where it came from, why it was built. This dockside level can tell you a little bit more about the ship's career, what it did, and then at sea, maybe notable passengers, and if it was lost, you know, the circumstances of the, um, the ship's loss. So we are really uh, excited about this. This is a fun little feature that we were really keen to put in, and we're sure you're going to have a lot of fun doing. So with that done, let's have a look at the final level and the final aspect that I wanted to talk to you about. For this, we're actually going to go back to the Empress of Ireland, and we're going to go to the mid-ocean level. So we've spawned onto the Empress, it's a foggy day, and you can't really see a lot of what's going around you. Um, we're here up on the bridge, and if you just have a look out here, you'll see that there's um, really not a lot. And so the third aspect that I wanted to talk to you about today, and the thing we're really excited about with this project, is your ability to control time and the weather. Now, these ships existed in very varying, wildly varying circumstances. Um, ships like the Empress of Ireland, for example, operated in some of the most harsh marine environments on Earth. The uh, North Atlantic Ocean is a real harsh place to be. And it wasn't always plain sailing. And so it's important to recreate the conditions that these ships existed in. So with Grand Voyage, with a simple touch of the key, you'll be able to bring up a fairly comprehensive menu for your weather and change it to be whatever you want. So we can have a nice sort of clear day. Simple as that. The other thing that you have complete control over here is the time of day. This is a slider that you can just bring about to change conditions to be essentially whatever you want. You can also synchronize time with your current time in real life. Now, right now, it's about 7.35 p.m. It's going to cut to nighttime and it's going to stay synchronized until uh, I tell it not to. What this kind of results in is a really unique um, environment where you can have a lot of fun with messing around with the weather and just seeing these ships in very dynamic environments. And the thing that we most enjoy playing with is the rain because let me tell you it completely changes the atmosphere and the vibe so let's go up here onto the monkey island on the flying bridge uh just up here and kind of check out this weather you can see that once it starts raining the deck gets a little bit wet and a little bit slippery and if you've ever spent much time at sea uh on ships you know well the the smell of uh wet teak and what that can be like and so yeah again we wanted to really create a sense of these ships are living breathing things and you can see here um the oceans going past us we're moving you know we're heading um over to our to our destination we'll head down aft um to the the stern of the ship you can see that now it's really raining <laughs> the deck's getting all wet um we'll try and get under under cover I'm going to introduce you to what is probably one of the most terrifying experiences um, that you can have at sea. And that is a thunderstorm, a raging thunderstorm in the middle of the North Atlantic Ocean. And it just makes you want to get inside as quickly as possible. But we're not going to get inside just yet. Or maybe we'll get undercover here. We'll go down to the promenade deck. What's interesting is walking around these ships like this, you really get to know them. Whoa. That was a big thunderbolt. You really get to know your way around, and eventually you feel like you've, you know, you've 
lived on board it or something. It's a really weird experience. We're going to head aft here and just head outside. But you can see how this environment completely changes uh, as soon as it starts pouring rain like that. It's scary. But it's a lot of fun messing around with it. So this was a, a weather th system that um, Matt installed for us and has been testing quite extensively. And we're very excited to say, wow, that it's all working very well. And it's completely seamless. If you want to make it now, daytime, to have the storm still be going. Here we are. So the whole result is quite an immersive experience and it's also fairly moving to be honest. Uh, you know, these ships got rained on and they were stuck in storms and they were stuck in fog. Obviously for the Impress of Ireland uh, that was a problem. It means that you get to experience them in really authentic, um, lifelike environments and it really does a lot to help bring them back to life. But I'll show you my absolute favourite thing to do is to set it to partial cloud and make it just around sunset, maybe about there. Where are we? For some of the most beautiful views, <laughs> you can set it to sunset and I just love the way that the light hits the promenades here. To be honest with you, I could have this set up in the background and read and sip a cup of coffee all day <laughs> and relax and enjoy it. So that's all I'm going to show you. That's a bit of an insight into what Grand Voyage is. It's going to be a much, uh, a much bigger beast. We're going to be adding a lot to it. Um, I know you guys have a lot of questions. Um, I'm sorry I wasn't able to take any during this stream, but I just wanted to give you a bit of an insight into what we've been up to. Um, I'm just going to answer a few questions that I already know you guys have got. When is Grand Voyage being released? At the moment, we have the game slated for V1 uh, being released in early 2024. What ships will be at launch? The Empress of Ireland, the Laconia, and uh, we will be doing our best to get the R101 included in that launch as well. What ships will we be doing immediately after? We're looking at the Hungarian and the Aquitania fairly early on um, in the game's life cycle. Two really interesting and very different ships. How much of the interiors will be completed? Um, this is a live service game, so it will be available on services uh, like Steam, for instance, to, to be purchased. That's the base game. And then subsequent vehicles, subsequent ships can be added to your fleet. And so it also means that we can update interiors and add to the ships. So we're looking probably at completing a very small amount of the ship's interiors, relatively speaking, but giving you enough to walk around and experience in your own, in your own time and learn about the way that these things work, but then adding to them more over time. So we've got some really beautiful uh, interiors on the way, which I'll show you in a future uh, update in the very near future. So as of this stream going live, the Grand Voyage YouTube page is also live. That's Grand Voyage Game is the uh, YouTube username. The website grandvoyagegame.com is live. You can go on there, you can download some um, promotional you know, uh, desktop backgrounds and things like that. The trailer is live in high definition over on the Grand Voyage YouTube channel. So go and watch that because we'll be getting updates out on there, keeping you guys posted on development, what we're doing, and also our Instagram, Grand Voyage Game, over on Instagram. So go and check it out. You can subscribe to our newsletter. Make sure you subscribe to us on, on YouTube and follow us on Instagram because we'll be getting all of our updates out over there. This is a gorgeously graphical game. It just looks beautiful. We can't wait to uh, have you guys explore it and have a look around and share with us your, um, your own screenshots and what you think of the environment. So reporting to you live from the, uh, the after decks of the Empress of Ireland, watching the sun going down in the distance. I just wanted to say thank you all very much for watching this morning. I hope you're all as excited about Grand Voyage as we are and we can't wait to show you more, which we will do very soon. So go subscribe to us on YouTube at Grand Voyage Game. As always, until next time, stay safe, stay happy, and I'll see you again.